Hello, and welcome to another video in our series about getting dressed in the past. Today, we're going to take a look at the clothing of a typical sailor in the early 17th century. So come aboard and join me. So I'm standing here with Aaron in the officer's quarters on the Susan Constant. And we're gonna show you the typical clothing of a sailor. While a lot of elements are similar to what we've seen our English colonists wear, there are some things that are pretty specific to a sailor that basically help them do their job when they're sailing on the seas. So the things that Aaron is starting out in, you may recognize if you've seen our Dressing an English Colonist video, he has his linen shirt on, and this is his basic undergarment. Um, linen absorbing all that sweat from when he's out there working hard. Um, he can change that shirt out for a clean one and help keep himself clean. Um, covering his legs are a pair of breeches made out of linen canvas. The style of breeches are called Venetians. They are full at the waist and they are slim down at the knee. And that linen canvas is a great fabric for warmer weather like we have here in Virginia. And it's going to also be great when he's out working on the seas because it's very similar to the canvas that's, that sails are made out of. So we know it's going to be a durable fabric for working out here in these conditions. Um, on his legs, his uh, legs are covered by stockings which are held up by garters and the garters are those knitted bands that he has tied below his knee to keep his stockings up and of course his leather shoes. So some of the other layers uh, that Aaron might put on in the warm summertime, he might put on his linen canvas cassock. Now cassocks are one of those garments that are very particular to sailors. We see them in many, many images of sailors as well as inventories of clothing that was owned by sailors. And these were also quite common with soldiers as well. And what do those two groups of people have in common? Well, they are usually part of a large group where you need to outfit a lot of people at once and they also need to have a wide range of movement, especially sailors who are going to be climbing in the rigging. The cassock is a loose fitting garment that he can easily move around in and because this one's made out of linen canvas it's going to be durable but it's not as insulating um, as say a cassock made out of wool. So this is a great choice for these Virginia summers or sailing in the Caribbean in these warmer climates. This is going to be a great choice for a sailor working out there and on his head he can wear a linen cap which will help give him just a little bit of um, protection from the sun but of course a sailor wouldn't want to wear a wide brimmed hat like we see our soldiers or male colonists wearing because it's going to possibly get knocked off while he's climbing up in the rigging so a cap that fits closely to his head will provide a little bit of protection from the sun um, but not get in the way too much. So these are great for warmer weather situations but what about when it starts to get a bit cooler? because it can certainly get quite chilly out on the high seas. So Aaron is going to remove that loose cassock and he's going to start building up layers the same way that you would start putting on layers if you were getting ready to go out in colder weather. The first layer he's going to put on is a garment called a waistcoat. And this is a sleeveless garment, although sometimes it can have short sleeves or long sleeves as well and it's made out of red wool. And this is really a base layer that he can wear. Um, if it's cool enough that he just wants to wear the waistcoat while he's working, he can. Um, but it's not, it's sort of in between an undergarment and an outer garment. It's not something that he's gonna wanna wear out when he's on shore leave walking around town. Um, that wouldn't be considered quite uh, acceptable wear, but for certainly working around the ship, if he wants a little bit of extra coverage, that's a great choice. But it's also really good for beginning to layer up 
um, different items of clothing for when the weather is cooler. And you'll see that he is tying the ends of the waistcoat together with a series of ties, and this helps the garment be adjustable. So he can either have it closer to his body or looser, um, depending on what he needs. If he needs a little more room one day or a little more um, range of movement, he can have that. And this is again just a nice insulating layer to wear underneath his other garments. So now he can put his cassock back on. It could be a canvas cassock like this or a, a cassock made out of wool, which again just provides a little more coverage. So in this way, he's, he's a bit more properly dressed. He's got his waistcoat covered up, but that waistcoat um, is providing extra warmth and protection there for him. And now he's going to put on another outer garment, which is a hooded coat. And this is a type of coat that we see very, very often in images of sailors. And it's quite long and it has a hood on it, which of course is going to be very welcome when you are out standing watch on a, a cold or rainy night out on the deck and you need that extra protection there. One other item that is very much associated with sailors during this time period is a sort of funny looking hat called a thrum cap. And the thrum cap is a knitted cap that then has these little furry thrums, these little furry hairs that are um, woven into the knitted base. And this, while it looks a bit silly, is incredibly warm and is going to provide him with excellent warmth on his head, which is very important. And even though, again, it may look a bit silly, it's an actually incredibly practical. And you see these on images of many, many sailors. We also have a series of images of sailors who are up in the Arctic, and of course they all have their thrum caps. A lot of them have their hooded coats as well, so this is typical for a sailor in those colder climates. So something you would definitely see in England or north of their um, Scandinavian countries, so this is very typical for sailors in those climates. And one last thing that Aaron is going to show you, but um, he won't put them on now, is another type of breeches that are very um, associated with sailors. They are longer than the Venetian breeches that he's wearing, and they're also wide and open at the bottom. And it's possible that these are referred to as slops, and that's something that becomes strongly associated with sailors, not just in the 17th century, but over time into the 18th century as well. And we see these on lots of images of sailors from, these time from this time period, these long, open breeches. And again, this is going to provide you with more coverage, but also it's going to give you a greater range of movement. So when they're having to climb up into the rigging, they can easily do that because they don't have those more tightly fitted breeches that you might see on other men or, or even gentlemen that are very fitted. So these are an excellent choice for sailors, which is why you see them so often wearing them. Now, these slops in particular are made out of a fabric that to your eye may look very modern, but this is actually a reproduction of a fabric that was found on the ship the Mary Rose, which sank in 1545. And this scrap of fabric that was found in the wreckage was of this checked wool, and the original piece um, was this check and we have actually had it dyed um, to yellow which is a, um, a period color so this is a color that you could get from period natural dyes of the time period probably weld or fustic will produce a beautiful yellow like this and that's based on written records that we have of sailors inventory so their clothing mentioned a textile such as this. And this is produced by the Tudor Taylor, who are in England. They commissioned this fabric to be made and it is so excellent for our sailors clothing. And of course, it's always a great conversation starter because even though it looks quite modern to our eyes, it actually is well documented for our time period. One last piece that we want to look at 
are these accessories here that Aaron is wearing because these are also specific to a sailor. But since they're not quite clothing and they're tools that serve a purpose, I'm going to have Aaron talk to us about those. So I have here a couple of tools that sailors would use um, when they're operating a ship. First is our rigger's knife here, um, and you'll notice that it has this uh, kind of pointy bit here at the end that's tapered. It's going to allow you to um, open seams and canvas, to um, cut open seizings, things like that. Um, and then also the knife has a nice um, broad deep uh, blade here so it's good for chopping a uh, line or you can use a mallet to hit a line and get a nice clean cut my other tool here is the marlin spike it's kind of like the it's very simple but it is the the sailor's multi-tool you can use this for all sorts of things uh, most often when working with line you can use it to open the lay of the rope um, so you can use that when making splices like this in the line that for use in the rigging, um, for tightening down knots, for um, untying stubborn knots. Um, the Marlin Spike really does all of those things. Thank you so much for joining us for another video in our series about getting dressed in the past. If you liked our video, please give us a like. And if you have any questions, leave them below for us in the comment and we'll be sure to get back to you. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. See you next time.